Welcome back everyone, theCUBE's live coverage, Google Next here in San Francisco, California. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE, with Dustin Kirkland here. We got the team coverage, Rob Stretch, Lisa Martin, and our team blogging away and getting all the stories, getting all that data and sharing with you, Google Next, huge action-packed event from infrastructure to new platforms around AI, all making it happen, solving solutions, hitting the developers, and of course, a growing ecosystem. We got a great interview here. We got Red Hat and Google, we got Dan Love, Global Alliance Executive for Google, works for Red Hat, and Venkit got a many product leader at Google Cloud. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on theCUBE and I appreciate your time. Thanks for your time and thanks for giving us a chance. You know, I love Red Hat's story. I've been a fan since day one. Obviously, I'm open source, so old enough to remember those days when it started. And this is the success you guys had over the years in open source and serving the enterprise. And now, as the cloud continues to grow, your relationship with Google is not notable here as Partner of the Year Award you guys got. Huge success partnering, so congratulations, you guys are here on theCUBE. Partner of the year, give us the update on the relationship, obviously good enough to get the award. <laughs> what's new, Talk, explain the Google relationship with Red Hat, why the award, what's the notable? Well, I'll let Red yeah, Hat sure. start out I, there. Yeah. And I can, I can begin and uh, yes. Dan can sort of chime yeah. in. So, um, yeah, we've been uh, a partner with Red Hat for a number of years now, uh, we have a lot of uh, customers together, and uh, frankly, in the last year, year and a half, our work has been about you know making sure that the customer experience on the platform is top notch. That frankly is on the product side. It means that we have all the right products for customers and the right product experiences for customers. Uh, we have RHEL on the platform. You know, these are bits that we work closely with Red Hat to make sure that they're customized for Google Cloud. Uh, we have RHEL for SAP, and SAP is a very big workload and a solution for us. So even that is you know customized on Google Cloud um, by Red Hat and Google engineers. Uh, on the commercial side, uh, we've come a long way in making sure that whether you're a pay-as-you-go customer on the platform, whether you're doing a bring your own you know, subscription type deal, all of those are well supported. Many of these things did not you know, work uh, maybe two years ago or so. Thanks to all the good collaboration between the companies, all of that is, uh, you know, is, 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 it's happening now, right? Um, beyond that, I mean, I'll let Dan chime in on the specifics on some of the commercial details and the product details. We've been able to make sure that customers have benefit to use on the platform. Yeah, Dan? what are you most yeah. proud of, Dan? Well, that's, a, uh, that's what I think why we're partner of the year. If you would look a year ago, you would see our product suite. We were basically a rail shop on, uh, right? We were OS only with, with GCP. But we were multi-cloud. If you look at the other hyperscalers, we have a larger product suite. It was our job to come in and work, and the Google team and the Red Hat team have been phenomenal working together. In one year, we went from just having RHEL, we have RHEL for SAP, we brought our Ansible product, we have our OCP product. At the end of the year, we're going to bring our managed OCP, which is OSD, our mm. OpenShift, dedicated. And then we're, we're, we're in conversations for our middleware product. So we're, where we've been in a year, where we're at now, the customers that we had, the shared customer, enterprise customers we had a year, and you look now, it's phenomenal of the, the, the huge change that the teams have made in just one year. So those enterprise customers, probably traditionally some of them are on-prem customers. Correct. That's correct. Uh, maybe in other clouds as well. Draw you know, lines between all of those. Tell us about you know, how that customer experience works from you know, the on-prem, maybe another hyperscaler cloud, and then especially in the Google Cloud here. So I think that's one thing that Red Hat brings um, to the, the, um, the cloud journey is that we're multi-cloud. Some customers want that multi-cloud experience. We have the ability, the tool sets, we have the migration strategies to take them on, off on-premises into the cloud of their choice. When they're all in on, on Google, then we have that option as well that we can be, you know, I like to say, Sometimes the customer is a Red Hat customer and they just happen to be using a specific you know, cloud. Yeah. Other times, they're all in on the cloud and they just happen to be using Red Hat. And what we've done together as a team is we've made sure that both of those customer sets yep. have the ability to come in to the, to the partner of their choice. It's either you know, Google or it's Red Hat. And we have that journey button for them. We can bring them from on-premise, we can bring that seamlessly onto the cloud and make sure that their cloud experience and their on-premise experience, there's no degradation, right? Yeah. There, it, RHEL is RHEL, and, and with the teams working together, we've been able to maintain that. 
trust comes up a lot when we're having conversations with Red Hat and uh, Google. The customer, enterprise customers you guys serve, they got expectations, right? And they, they want to have a consistent platform experience across environments. Trust is huge. Absolutely. When you guys talk to customers, how does, what does that translate to them? Because they're trying to do a lot of things right now uh, in the infrastructure side. They got to get multiple, multiple environments going, consistent in interface, they got developers, they try to get these apps out there. They're trying to move a lot of things together, especially yep. now with cloud native services. We talk about it all the time. And now with the whole data thing coming on, it's a whole nother level. What's the customer view when it comes to the relationship, trust, Share some, share some perspective of the customer. Well, can I start? Yeah, I think from my perspective at least, uh, the way I see it is when customers come over, they want to make sure that the experience that they've been getting on premises is, is, is the same that they get on Google Cloud. And that's a key aspect of trust. They want to make sure that every time we launch a new instance family, for example, from day one, RHEL and RHEL for SAP is top notch. The support is there, right? So that's part of trust too. And of course, the, there's security dimension to trust also, and I, you know, Dan can definitely talk to the, you know, how they're hardening the RHEL operating system. You know, it's really, it's about the infrastructure level, you know, security, and I think in the keynote yesterday, there was a lot that was talked about on how we do it in infrastructure foundational layer. Of course, then, it, <laughs> you know, the, at the OS layer, the same thing has to be there. And of course, the application layer, things that customers manage, we provide a number of services on top. An example would be VM Manager, right? Uh, we provide VM Manager to make sure that you get good control of your patch uh, for all the different operating systems, and RHEL is part of that. So that's what customers expect, and that's what we're, uh, frankly, delivering to together. The other thing also I may point out is on the experience side is um, customer support experience expectations are also the same. So today when someone comes over to Google Cloud and runs RHEL, they can call either Red Hat or Google for their support needs. And we take care of in the background to make sure that we pass the support through to Red Hat and vice versa. Yeah. So that's another way of like ensuring that when customers are coming in with their workloads that run on RHEL, we got them covered, and that's the key element of trust, right? So at least that's my perspective, Dan. Yeah, I'm glad you touched on the security angle. I didn't know if oh, that was. I, so I've got a great tagline for, for that. <laughs> <laughs> Marketing <laughs> won't <laughs> let me say it. Right? Uh -oh. Come on, <laughs> say it. But, well, say it. I can think, Come on, so, <laughs> we're not marketing department here, let's go. So <laughs> all, our, all our Red Hat products are built off of RHEL, or RHEL tech, or excuse me, uh, you know, RHEL, or RHEL technologies, right? Sure. And so, um, we start at that level. Yep. That's just, that's secure, right? We want that experience. If it's RHEL in the cloud, it's RHEL on premises, RHEL on the edge, it's yep. RHEL, and we have to maintain that, and we test. Yep. When we bring it into GCP, not only are we testing, the GCP team is testing as well. Yeah. Right? And so, for me, the amount of, um, Google has that same type of energy and same type of desire for security in their cloud. Right. And it's, it's baked in, they're proud of it, they want to be established as one of the most trusted, safest clouds. When you take the safest products, because of course I'm talking from a Red Hat standpoint, right? Yeah. And we're based off RHEL. You take that base of safety and security and you add it to the security of going to the cloud. There's no better yeah. place for our customers to land that journey, that business journey from on-premises to the cloud, right. then taking the Red Hat products and putting them on to uh, Google Cloud. So I'm glad you used the word energy. I think that's, you know, I think one of the themes yeah. of what we're seeing here at, at this show is the energy that, that Google brings. Today, yeah. uh, today's keynote, uh, which is about to happen here shortly, is dedicated to developers. All right, let's bridge this conversation, mm. switch gears a little bit and talk about Red Hat, uh, Red Hat and Google for developers. Uh, talk to us a little bit about CentOS, some of the changes in the CentOS uh, and Fedora ecosystem and how that all comes together with, with Red Hat. Uh, do you want to start or do you want me to jump in? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, you go ahead actually. Talk about the CentOS <laughs> and you guys are doing, I can add on top of what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The New CentOS first. is yeah. going to come up. Let's get that um, out there. The, you yeah. know, it's going it's to continue. And, and the, the, free, the free distros are going to have their space. And so, you know, um, what, I'll just give you a personal story of what I'm seeing right now. You know, there's, um, when we move CentOS in front of, and we, we produce CentOS Stream, what we're finding is that it, it's causing redeployments. But we're seeing customers that are coming in and now they're reassessing themselves. And they're saying, geez, we didn't even realize we had CentOS running. So we have rail shops that are production rail shops and 
they're they're looking deeper into what they're doing and they're finding they've got sent to us they didn't even know existed, mm -hmm. right? And so I think those customers now are, are once it's once you have to redeploy, now's the perfect time for customers to start assessing where are they going to go, right? Some of the CentOS customers are finding that by going to CentOS Stream, they're actually getting more upstream faster back into RHEL, and that was the intent. And so they're finding two benefits. One, they didn't realize by, by using CentOS on the other side of RHEL, it was taking a very long time for their changes to get upstream and then come down into RHEL. Now that path is a lot faster for them. The second thing is they're starting to recognize, whoa, we didn't realize that we had two branches. We had a CentOS ranch and we had a RHEL ranch. Maybe it's time to start looking at just bringing all that cattle into one ranch, right? And that's where we're, we're really looking at that space. We've got, working with Google, we're, um, we have our, our, our classic 1P console. We're looking at bringing in offers into their 3P marketplace so that, and then we're looking at self-serve type of SKU. So what we're looking at is a way in which, depending on what, where the customer is, how we can, of course, I want them to go to RHEL, right? I, that's, that's, but we're looking and we're working with, with tooling, we're looking at that experience, and, and back to Vencat, which he keeps going back to, and, and it's, it's proper. Whatever they're going to do, we need to make sure that they're a good experience for them. And if that customer has got to redeploy and they're going to go to, you know, from CentOS, of course, I think the easiest is to go to CentOS Stream or preferably to go to RHEL. This is the time to look at it, and we're making offers available in every size and shape and segment for those customers to make that move seamlessly. So, Wincat, maybe you can link that to the developer story mm -hmm. uh, at Google and within Google Cloud. Yeah, so, I mean, our perspective, by the way, uh, just to add to what Dan is saying, right? On the CentOS, we got a lot of customers who are using CentOS today on the platform, right? Um, and each of these customers right now is scratching their heads on what their plan should be post the EOL date. And majority of these customers are on CentOS 7. I think we see 90% of customer base still on CentOS 7, which is going to go end of life, uh, middle of next year. You said right? 90, 9 zero. 9 zero, that's wow. right. It's a huge number of folks yep. uh, on that particular distro. A segment of these customers are definitely looking at RHEL as their um, destination, and they got, frankly, less than a year to kind of get there. We see two friction points um, um, for these customers. On the product side, how do we make it very easy for them to uh, flip the bit, so to speak, and get that sent to us into RHEL? So that's one product friction. The second is on the commercial side, because you are going from free to maybe a paid version. And we're working with Red Hat to make sure that on both, the, both those dimensions, we remove the friction. So from a product point of view, create the right tooling, et cetera, so that it's a seamless move. On the commercial side, whatever they are offering to end customers to kind of like ease the path, we put that in front of customers in a very seamless fashion. That's where the marketplace offerings, et cetera, all come in. I think the developer point is interesting because um, at the end of the day, because it is the same code base between CentOS and RHEL, there should be really no difference from um, you know, whether applications work or whether there's retesting required, et cetera. So we do think that it's more or less a seamless move as long as we can figure out both the product dimension and the commercial dimension, right? And to kind of remove that friction from a customer's um, sort of path. Yeah. And, and that's what the work is really about. Yeah, yeah and, and on the developer, that's a, that's a great, great path. Uh, we have the RHEL for developer SKU. Right. In fact, I was just at the booth, I was, a uh, gentleman walked up, he said, you know, hey, I've got this development team, what do I do? And I'm like, you've got tons of options here. Yep. If you're CentOS, you could go to CentOS Stream. You've got five developers, we've got a developer SKU, right? Yep. The experience on GCP is going to be the same. By using that developer SKU, you also have the ability to get access to RHEL type of tooling. Does it ease the migration? Of, it, yeah, can you talk maybe a little bit about that, the migration from I, developer SKUs to production? And I think that's a, that's, that's a great story, is the sense that once, if you're using the RHEL for developer SKU, there's uh, low cost, free, for sizing. We have, we have sizing on that, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if a, we have the ability with these customers on GCP with RHEL to grow. They, they come to the cloud or they want to stay on premise. They want to stay on premise until they get big enough and they want to take options. That migration is really, really easy. So we've talked about that. By going to RHEL for developer, now you get access to some incredible tools. You get access 
to our insights product. Our insights product becomes available to let them know what's wrong or what's inside their images that they need to be aware of. That also ties into our satellite pro our products and our Ansible products to help migrate and or keep that day two up to date for them. So we've got the Ansible products plugging in there, we got the developer SKUs, and then once they've graduated to, to a production run, well, they've been using RHEL. And now the movement of developer to, to production is seamless. Yep. Talk about the uh, migration and optimization on Google Cloud, real quick question. As people look to migrate and have operating experience, what's the optimization? I love the consistent experience, that's the check. To hit that box, good. Yeah. Now I want to optimize, I want to start getting in and cranking up the cloud. What's the, what do developers have for choices, um, options? We still get the RHEL support. You know, you guys have always have a great track record of what, you know, million years of support, but <laughs> Rel, um, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you guys keep the support going, but how do I optimize for the cloud and maintain that trust? Well, I think from an optimization perspective, like Dan mentioned, the, the bits that we have already come pre-tuned for the use case. What we see most often is customers don't really need to do any more fine tuning or performance tuning or what have you, because they come in with the right drivers, Everything just works, like we got GVNIC for example, yeah. the drivers are in the bits already, it just works out of the box. Yeah. So, and most enterprise customers, they're not looking to kind of fine tune beyond that. Yeah. And the good thing is that because SAP SKU is so optimized for SAP, HANA databases and such, again, even those don't need <laughs> further optimizing. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's the beauty of the work that we're already doing behind the scenes that I don't see actually, frankly, a lot of optimization going on. Yeah. We internally use a lot of REL for SAP, and I know uh, there's a lot of SAP workloads that we see now. Um, so I don't know if you guys see anything else yeah. or different on we, your end. We tune, we tune our kernel yeah. for, for the cloud. We tune our kernel, you know, so, um, the one thing I want to plug here is the fact that um, it's not an optimization, but we have a tool called Image Builder, and it allows the allows customers to pick the cloud that they want to go to, and we will build the image for them yeah. that they just have to import in. We test all that, and I think that is, yeah. I think the optimization story is the amount of testing that both teams do. We test it, Google tests it. So when it lands there, you're sure that it doesn't need optimized because we're running those we're running those performance numbers and security numbers in behind you. When you when you get there, you should be comfortable with what you're what you're executing. Dan and Venkat, thank you so much for coming on the Cube and sharing the update and the story. Obviously, Red Hat, you're leaning into GCP uh, Cloud and getting the recognition. That's a good sign. Congratulations on, on the momentum you guys have. And, Absolutely. And the ecosystem's buzzing. I think it's a nice, uh, nice to see you guys getting that all together. It was really beautiful to have partners coming in and uh, we've been, we've interviewed a bunch of them, so it's been, been we're, fun. We're very excited and thank <laughs> you so much for having yeah. us. Yeah. yeah, we'll see you guys at KubeCon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> thanks for having us and uh, yeah. you know, yeah. I, uh, it, is, it is my pleasure to be here, yeah. but I want to be back here. Yeah. You see the products that we're bringing, yeah. you see yeah. the things that we're going to continue doing. Yeah. I have every expectation we're going to be partner of the year next year too. Well, we'll see you guys next year, and again, congratulations on the award, and congratulations on all the optimization. The cloud goodness continues here in the Cube. We're getting all the data for you, sharing it to you. We're tuning up the Cube. Um, we'll get that image idea, we'll bring the Cube and get some image updates for <laughs> the Cube. Yeah. Love, that, <laughs> love that idea. <laughs> Remember you have Dustin Kirkland's here with me, John Furrier, Lisa Martin, Rob Stretch, a team coverage of theCUBE here in San Francisco for Google Next. We'll be right back after the keynotes, after this short break.